work for an editor okay uh this is j-dub i'm here with james kraus a uh, ufc fighter um and we're gonna chop it up tonight i got a couple of quick shout outs before we get started one is access rejuvenation um they're our big sponsor you see them in the background here on my green screen um i gotta uh take a shout out to them they are our main sponsor they back us up on everything we do uh everywhere from me fighting to uh to you know the, the the podcast and and any show we do. So, anyway, um, let's uh, welcome James Cross, man. What's up, brother? How you doing? What's up, man? So, James, man. Um, first off, man, I'm excited, man. This is probably uh, this is my favorite guest right here. Like I've been waiting for this this interview for a minute. Um, James is uh, James. I, I've I've trained a lot with James. I have uh, Zach is my main coach. Um, if I was a little closer to James, I think I would have a, a probably a little more um, time with James. But the the few times that I have got to train with James have been awesome. Um, I've been kicked in the face. Um, I've been <laughs> I've been uh, uh, you know humbled completely. And then uh, anyway, James, man, uh, let's uh, let's hear, it, man. How's how has you know? I, I don't want to talk about COVID all all day but like you know how's it going man what's what's happening with with glory what's happening with you as a ufc fighter and uh you know just the the organization well i mean as, as far as 2020 goes it's been the best year i've ever had so i don't know you know i mean i can't really uh, i can't really complain much uh it's been great for me and uh it's been great for my team it's been good for business i don't i mean i don't you know we had the we had the shutdown or whatever there's i don't know i i, I just i'm a firm believer that uh you just have to adapt to, you know, adapt to whatever comes your way. There's, there's, there's not much I could do about it, whether I agree or disagree with what's going on, the shutdowns, all that stuff. Doesn't really matter. Facts are that uh, you, know, you got to play the hand that you're dealt, and uh, you know, I just try to, I try to hit that head on with, uh, you know, with everything really, not just with, with fighting or business, but that's kind of how I've dealt with everything. It's kind of, I guess, a mantra of mine in, in life. So uh, it's been great for me. I really can't complain a bit about it. Um, so just to enlighten everybody about how good of a year 2020 has been for James, um, and, and glory and FAC. So, uh, you guys started a new organization, FAC. Um, and, and I've, uh, I fought on two of those shows. Um, what you guys have had five now because you, you had, right. Yeah. Is it five? You guys are going on six. Okay. I fought on two of these shows and, um, uh, extremely successful, uh, biggest show in, in the Midwest, um, extremely well put together. Joe Wooster, man, I can't say enough about all of you guys, man. Um, just very impressed with just the, the blueprint for, for doing shit right, man, is, is the way these guys are doing it in my, in my opinion. Um, now how many fighters have, have we, I, I say we, because I, I am a team member of, of glory North. So I say we, uh, how many fighters have, you guys signed to the UFC just in 2020? Uh, I think that we've only signed two. Two, but yeah, how many have had, fought opportunities? Yeah, wise? I think everybody has fought. I think total we've had 12. I think we have 12 <laughs> guys in the UFC under the glory banner. So I, I feel like that, uh, yeah, I think we've signed a two. We've had a couple – uh, come back, uh, you know, from like we, we had Kroom that won, Kroom, right? Yep, yep. Wit Kroom got signed, and Wit got signed this year. Those Wit are the got two. Signed. Oh, you know, and uh, Jeff Molina got signed this year as well. Yep. That's it, right there. Three, so threes in in this. So so 2020 hasn't been a nightmare for everybody. And then and then like the the show has. I I mean I, I get that the attendance sucks, but like you guys can't sell the tickets that you you're supposed to. Whatever. Um, but like, dude, the show, from what I can see from my side of it, looks like it's thriving, man. Like, uh, the FAC has been awesome. Everybody wants on it. I mean, it's the only show in KC running right now. I mean, yeah, I know it's, you it's, it's great. You know, the, the, we've secured the, the streaming deal with UFC fight pass. So that definitely helps a ton. You know, a, a lot of the guys want to get on there and, and fight because they know there's, there's eyes on that show. So that definitely helps. 
but I think just the, the bulk of it is just the, the, you know, the organization of, of the entire show as a whole. Um, I had a, I met with Dan Wyatt for about 45 minutes, a couple, probably, it's been probably three or four weeks now. And right. he, he was telling me, you know, he was basically telling me like a show needs two things and it's uh, good fights and production. And I feel like in terms of, uh, you know, on Fight Pass, I feel like we're one of the the, the more well put together uh, organizations in terms of in terms of production and in terms of of good fights. I mean, we we've only had five shows, and we have uh, three people that have fought in our organization to go on to the UFC. Uh, that's not counting you know other large organizations. So that right there, in five shows, we put three people in the UFC. I think that's just a huge statement of of what you know what is being done out of out of Kansas City and out of Fighting Alliance Championship. Hands down, man, you guys have put us on the map um, straight up. Uh, Midwest used to be the stepping stone. It's not it's not that way anymore. Glory has yeah. made that possible. It, 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 hands down, hands down, you guys have done it. I, I don't care if anybody else disagrees or not. Uh, I'm going to say in my humble opinion that you guys have absolutely put the Midwest on the map. We're no longer anybody's stepping stone. We're, 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 we're handing out ass whippings now. And that's uh, it, it, like we're feared. So, I mean, that's that's all – I, 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 you know, I dare to say it, but it's, it's, it's all you and Zach and, and, you know, the way you guys have done glory and just, it's, I'm not, I know I'm not naming everybody cause I don't know everybody behind the closed doors, but I know you and Zach are extremely dedicated individuals. Um, I see you guys work hard and, and fight and, and, and then come and train literally the next day. And I mean, like, it's, it's just, uh, you guys deserve it, man. Well deserved. Congratulations on all that. Um, Thank you. So I did want to ask you about a couple of things, man. Um, so what, I, so man, let's talk about this um, Noons Anderson fight, man. Like mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you, what, what do you, how do you feel about it? Let's start with that. I feel uh, the same way about that fight as I do any other fight. I mean, I, I feel like you have to, right. You have to approach, uh, you have to approach each fight unobjectively, uh, without emotion, and you have to approach it just for what it is. It's a fight, fighter A versus fighter B. I don't really Do you, look at any fight versus like uh, like Amanda versus Megan. I look at it as fighter A versus fighter B. And if my fighter's fighter A, I have to figure out how A matches up with B and how I you know exploit weaknesses and how I handle that. You know, obviously, if you're looking at Amanda Nunes from a from a standpoint of uh, notoriety and credentials, so she's arguably the, the greatest female fighter of all time, but everything's possible until it's not right. So uh, Amen. Or, it's fighting possible bro. until it's not, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's, this is, this is the, the fight game. It's the hurt game. So, uh, yeah, man, I, like I said, I, I, are I you excited? The, Are you excited? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Hell yeah. Man. I'm I, pumped, I mean, bro. I'm super yeah. pumped, bro. Cause I mean, it's, it, Megan's our girl, bro. And like, you know, let's go. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. excited. I approach I approach every fight the same. To me, they're all the same. Like you know, this is a it's a world title fight, so I don't want to act like it's something that it's not. But it's obviously an incredible opportunity for everybody uh, involved. But you know, I, I I feel like I've had the most success when I approach things unemotionally and I approach them from a clear headed standpoint. So I try to really you know maintain that uh, that uh, the approach to to every fight, regardless of if it's a local level, regional level, uh, you know, or a UFC title fight. I try to approach it the same. That's a great, great way to be. I'm, I live and die on my emotion, man. You know this, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I wish, I wish I could be more subliminal and just kind of come into something a little bit more just and, and handle it the way, but I just, I live on the moment. And, uh, uh, but anyway, dude, this is, I'm super excited and I'm living on that <laughs> excitement. Yeah. I can't wait to watch this fight. Be good. Like, uh, yeah, man. Cause I just, just, it's good to see one of our people getting up there and, and getting to fight for, you know, against the, you know, arguably the best female fighter ever so yeah. um I, I i'd love to see megan go in there and just you know handle business it no longer you know will the midwest be considered anything other than you know with it straight up west coast east coast whatever we're we're, we're top notch um i train with with you guys i know it like there's no other freaking way that I, i've trained you know I've, I've went into gyms when i was in hawaii um you know they all they all train you know they all train similar but it's uh, I feel like our training regimen is is hands down the best in the world, man. And it's uh it's just fun to see everybody getting all these opportunities. I I, yeah. I wish I was I wish I was 10 years younger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. 
<laughs> it, uh, yeah, it's uh, it is what it is though. Um, so, so, um, I guess we've kind of covered everything, Griff. What a uh, we're editing this too, so don't worry about if uh, I, I lick away the camera, I'll I'll uh, I'll cut that out. He's, he's bitching at me on uh, the messenger right now about when I'm hey, don't look away from camera. Here you <laughs> give James your undivided attention. No worries. What uh. He's pulling up stats here, and what uh, what else? You text, did you? Okay, yeah, I'll like send it. Text, no, I see you. I see you. Okay, so yep. You have all James's stats right there from the USC app. Okay, super. All right, yep. I got all your uh, stats. Um, I already know all these. Like, I got these done by heart, dude. Okay, so. I get it. You're a super fan. I am a super fan. It's all right. James, my buddy. He's uh. I just follow him on Facebook and Instagram. I, I can't wait I can't, to get Zach on here. I can't wait to get Zach on here because I'm going to pull up his video of him kicking me in the face and me yeah. screaming. Someone call 911. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, we got to give you some training footage here. We got some training footage of you, Zach. Uh, is this normally how you train people? <laughs> anyway, um, is uh, what else do we want to talk about, man? Like, I thought I had this. Um, we wanted to talk about FAC. We wanted to talk about glory. We pretty well covered that. And then what James, what's good. Okay. So what's up with you? Uh, you got any fights in the works? Are you, uh, where are you at on, on your UFC career? I mean, I know where you're at. You, you just landed a new, uh, a, 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 you just got a big pay raise. I, I know I heard about that. Yeah. Um, you took a fight, um, down in Houston and, I don't want to go into like, you know, we, we know you don't leave it in the judges score hands, the sure. scorecard, you know, we all know you won that fight. Um, so in my opinion, man, you're, you know, this is, that's, that would have been your sixth win in a row. Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong here. I'm trying to, I get punched in the head a lot. That would have been um, seven. It would have been, that would have been, that would have been six, that. you would be seven in a row if you count your last one, right? I don't fucking know. Fuck, man, you're just fucking knocking people out, dude. He doesn't even remember. That's great. Um, anyway, you, you would have. So you, uh, you, you got a big pay raise. What, uh, what's next for James Kraus? Uh, I mean, you know, obviously, I, I, I coach quite a bit, so I'll be in, uh, I'll be be in Abu Dhabi in uh, pretty much all of January. I, you know, I leave. Uh, I'll be out there for at least two and a half, three weeks. So. Uh, and then I think starting uh, starting from February to March, I'll be. I think I have a fighter on every single card from February 13th to March 6th. Uh, at least awesome. one fighter on. I'll be out there every weekend. So uh, yeah, it's you know I'll, I'll have a busy for quarter, and that's why I fought. That I fought. Uh, you know, in October, you know, I, I knew I wasn't gonna fight again for the rest of the year if I didn't take that fight. So. Uh, you know, I, I fought to buy myself some time and, and cause I knew I'd have a busy, uh, few one with the, you know, coaching. Yes. Okay. So, um, we all know that you have already told, you told uh, on multiple interviews that you enjoy coaching more than you do fighting. Mm -hmm. Um, has that gotten more as you've gotten older or is that something that has just, uh, always been there? Like, is that something you've always enjoyed more than fighting? Uh, I don't know if it's always, I don't think I've always, always enjoyed it more, but, uh, you know, I've been in this sport for almost 15 years. So I feel like I've, uh, accomplished quite a bit of, uh, you know, I, I've accomplished really honestly everything that I've ever set out to do. I never said I wanted to be a world champion or anything like that. I honestly don't give a shit. Uh, I don't care about the rankings. Uh, I just enjoy competing. I enjoy fighting and, uh, and I've, I've, I've set my goals and I've hit those goals and, you know, I really enjoy I enjoy being a part of somebody else's journey and I enjoy watching other people helping other people accomplish their goals and their you know their uh watch there's something for me there's something about watching another man or, or woman uh like work towards a life goal. You know, not, not just a goal, but like a life goal that they've sacrificed for, you know, five, ten, fifteen years to get to like Kroom is a great example. Kevin Kroom, uh, him and I started fighting around the same time. I think I started a few months before him, maybe. Yeah. He's got uh, a he's shit ton a, of fights. What's that? He's got a shit ton of fights. Yeah. He's got a ton he's of fights. Like you. He's got a ton of fights. Yeah. He, he, he didn't make the smartest decisions early. And you know, I think he got with a team with us that somebody cared about him, somebody that coached him and, and you know, cared for his career. And yeah. I think that's obviously he's paid dividends for him. I agree totally. Um, I mean, that's just perfect example. I, you know, 
40 year old that goes pro and, and he's one and two and then goes to Zach and you know, we go five and two, we, we get, you know, four in a yeah. row. I mean, that, that'll tell you a little bit something about just putting in the hard work. Kroom is a perfect example. I, I, I think that's a great example. He, uh, Kroom blows me away every time I, I see, you know, him accomplish something. He, you know, he's kind of a goofy guy, but, uh, I, I really like that about him. Yeah. Uh, I just like, I, I, um, I, I, uh, He's really likable. He's really likable. Um, he damn sure doesn't lack anything in the personality department. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I didn't know if I you know, when I first met him, I didn't know if I was gonna like him or not. And uh, you know, you I just not like him, man. You I know, know, right? I dude, I saw the guy wearing the, what he was wearing. Like I was like, the dude had like some Ninja Turtle PJs yeah. on, man, and, and like some. Uh, I swear to God, they were like. I, I think he had like Power Ranger booties on, booty socks or something, man. You're probably right. And I was like, bro, what in the fuck are you wearing, man? And he was like, oh, what's up, bro? These are the shit, man. I'm like, bro, they are the shit, man. Like, yeah, dude. Like, just his attitude about it was great. Um, yeah, he's a really likable guy, man. And, and I don't know if I've met anybody that doesn't like him. All right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. He's uh, a, yeah. he's, he's fun, fun guy to be around, man. Um, yeah. I, uh, I, I remember I, so I got to fight on a card with him at Bellator, which was, uh, which was pretty cool. That was unexpected. Um, I, I was, I just, I, I admire Kroom. I do. Um, he's a, uh, he's a good guy and he's, and he, he works hard. So it's uh well-deserved one to see him, to see him be successful. Um, <sighs> what else we got Griff? Coaching is good. Like I, I definitely wanted to touch on coaching with yeah, with James. Good. Like I, I love to talk about me more, but I, I've been told that that's a no no. Like <laughs> Zach is the one. Is it, bro? You just can't keep talking about yourself, bro. Like and please God, stop telling the Chris Pratt story. Like <laughs> I love that story. Yeah, we did. <laughs> He's like, we know. We hear it to every podcast. Anyway, what else do we want to touch on, dude? Uh, let me go. Stocks come. On social media. We got about eight minutes, and then we're we're gonna start bugging James. Then we're then we're gonna start getting on his nerves. I don't want to get kicked in the face again. It was unfair. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I just like it's funny, like man, when when Zach hit me in the face of that, when I that got that video, man, like um, dude, I caught it. So we had the small gloves on, and we were just you know light touching, you know, and uh, I feel like I got pretty good control. Like I, I pull my punches, but they come fast. That's but I mean, cool. like. Oh my God. So I've gotten better. Okay. Well, not the big gloves, man. You can't hit the brakes on the big gloves, right? I don't have the stop and go. Okay. So anyway, uh, dude, we're sitting and I catch him with a left dude. Bink. And I seen his head go. I was like, Oh fuck no, dude. I spent like, so what you don't see in that video is that I'm running from him. Like for the, for the, the about 15 seconds before that video. And I'm like, somebody call 911. Somebody call 911. He's fucking smoking pissed. Like he's like, he's got that smile on his face where he's about to fuck you up. And like he gets, and I finally I faced him. I was like, "All right, fuck it, come on, let's go." By this time, my buddy got his phone out, and he's like recording this shit, and boom, face kick. And I was like, "Oh, I knew that was coming, dude." That's why I like popped off so quick. Somebody call nine one one. Like, yeah, I'd already been yelling for a minute. It was hilarious. Zach's a big bully. December twelfth. What's that? Yes, they did December. It was December eleventh and twelfth, right? Was the last FAC? Yep. Okay. Um, James on his Facebook page has December 12th. Today's a new day. Hashtag earner. Okay. It was 10th and 11th, right? No, it's 11th and 12th. It's it doesn't matter. I think it was 12th. It yeah. has a picture of a, him hugging a fighter. Have him go into that and like the emotion. Which fighter was it? Let me see. It was Jason High. It was Jason High. Here's the photo. So you have a reference point. It was Jason High. Okay, that'll the work. Photo that talking works. about the photo you're talking about. Uh, the story behind it is. Uh, Let me get the question is, in. Let me get the question in so that I can cut the edit out. Um, James, so um, I looked on. I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm on your Facebook all the time. Uh, not just you're not coaching me. You're just uh, you're 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 not just uh, my mentor and you know whatever the hell else you want to be. Tell me about the hug with Jason High, man. Yeah, uh, I mean. There's kind of different layers to it. So on Friday, uh, so we had we had two fights back to back Friday, Saturday, and on Friday, Friday was just one of those nights we hadn't had one in a long time where our team just sucked. Like even in the wins we pulled off, uh, even in the wins we looked like shit. So uh, Friday was rough. I was there Friday night. Uh, yeah, Friday, Friday sucked. Was... Friday was terrible. And uh, anyway, uh, Jason Jason High is the main event, and he's in a five round you know, war with a uh, UFC vet, uh, Jake Lindsay. Yep. And 
back and forth, you know, back and forth action. And then uh, Jason got hurt. Long story short, it comes out, starts the fifth round and, and gets a, and gets a, uh, a last minute knockout to a fight that he was for sure going to lose. Uh, he probably got 10 aided the round before that. And uh, anyway, it's just, it was really awesome to see, uh, you know, somebody like him that's been around some of that I respect a lot. I respect guys. For, it's, it's weird for me. I'm going to go on a, like a little rant here, but like, have fun. I don't respect. <laughs> I don't respect the, the talent. I, you know, there's a lot of people that I've seen come and go that have talent. That's not what I respect. I respect people that have been that have endured for long periods of time because this is not a sport that's easy to be in for a long time. You know, so I respect people that have have stayed consistent through the entirety. You know what I mean? That have stayed true to their game through the entirety, and that's one of the things I respect about Jason High a ton is you know he he has stayed uh, you know true to, to the game. And uh, he's put his time in, he's put his energy in, he's put his, you know, sacrificed a large portion of his adult uh, life to, to the sport. And I respect that quite a bit. So to see somebody that I respect and I help coach and he is on my, you know, on, on our, well, yeah, staff, yeah, so. sur- right. He has surgery. Right. And he was like, his career was, didn't he have surgery on his knee or something? Or he had some. I don't know if he had surgery. He had a knee injury, though. He, he was I, hurt. I don't, I don't know if he had surgery. I, guess, know, I, I think he, he did have surgery. I think he did have surgery. He was out for a couple of years, and like it was, yeah. you know, it was like he didn't know if he was going to be able to fight yeah. again, right? Yeah. So okay. Yeah. And, and, Sorry, and, and, Sorry, he, he, he came back from that. He came back from that, and and you know, him and I are we're, we're friends. Uh, you know, like I said, I, I kind of help coach him a little bit. I don't want to say that I'm his coach, but. But you know, we train together often. He's on the coaching staff at, at Glory Lee Summit, and uh, it's just somebody that I've watched over the you know the, a long time over the course of years, you know, ten plus years, and uh, you know, I respect so, I respect him a ton. So seeing him Mad pull respect. that win away, yeah, seeing him pull that win away was really really awesome. And it was actually as crazy as uh, that was the first time we've been training together for quite a while. And that was their first the first time I've ever cornered him in a fight. Nice. So I could see why, like, I mean, when you're, man, when you're losing a fight, man, and you still push through and then you come through and and especially it's it's a long enduring fight where it's, it lasted 25 minutes. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I could see why there would be some emotion there. There was, I did not catch that. I did not know that that fight was like that. I, I, like I said, I was there uh, Friday, but uh, I had my son. So I actually had to cut out early. I missed some of the better action towards the later part of the night, but yeah. I still enjoyed uh Wooster was a great guy, man. He, you know, he gave me some some tickets to bring me and my son there so we could check it out. And and uh, yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, so uh what else, Griff? We got anything else, buddy? Um training with Bellator fighter James Gallagher. James Gallagher? I don't know if I said his name right. Yes, you did. Yeah, you did, yeah. So uh training with James Gallagher. Is that something you want to talk about? Is it a- I mean, I'm just going through social media. No, let's let's say that's not important. Like, uh, let's stick with like uh, Megan's good. Like, yeah, Bellator's all right, but it is like let's stick with uh, any of the like Grant Dawson. Let's let's do a quick one about Grant. Um, what you think about him? I mean, this is <laughs> so Grant Dawson. Tell me about Grant, brother. Uh, Grant Grant's been with me since uh, he, he came in uh, right before his pro debut. He moved uh, from Nebraska to come train with us. And uh, I would say Grant, you know, I have a soft spot for Grant because he, he reminds me a lot of myself. And, and, uh, and when I say that, such I mean, a young guy. He's so young, dude. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, super successful young. Successful quick, man. Boy. Yeah, but he, but he, but what people don't see is the, is the, is the, the work that he puts in. Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody put, put the, the scope, uh, you know, the body of work that he's put in consistently over the last, five years that he's been with me uh the dude is just a workhorse man he's a workhorse he lives breathes mma uh he's got the cardio gene which means like he just doesn't really get tired uh, ever he can wrestle for hours uh and he's a student of the game you know he watches watches video when he's at home you know when he's not uh training he's he's watching video uh he he listens he's a very good student of the game he's a very good coach too he he's a he's got a very, very uh, systematic approach to uh, you know not just to his game but to other people's games too. And uh, well, he's, I, from he's, what he's I've a stud man, he's really good. From what I've seen, what I've experienced from Grant is uh, um, a lead, lead by example. Um, that is that is one thing that has impressed me. It's hard to 
uh, follow someone so young. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, that's, that's just something I feel like it, it probably runs into everybody's. It's very hard. Um, you know, in any aspect of life, uh, you know, I go back to, you know, maybe working as a 21 year old uh, in the construction industry, you know, you meet 22, 23, 24, I think he's uh, 25 or 26 years old or something. Yeah. Even, even yeah. that age, man, you'd meet these guys that, you know, their dad gave them, you know, this or that, you know, or letting them run the show or this and that. You just don't get, you, you, you don't have the respect for guys that, that didn't earn it. And I think that Grant has absolutely earned everything that he is. Hey, he has got just by hard work. Um, uh, just, and then if you don't, you know, you don't respect him, man, I mean, he'll earn it on the mat from you. Like it's just, yeah, yeah. it's extremely, he and is he's not a natural athlete. He's not, he's not overly fast. Uh, yeah. You know, like I wouldn't say he's like weights strong, uh, but what he lacks in those areas, man, he makes up for, I mean, he, he can be fast. You know, he can be, he's incredibly strong in positions, you know, uh, yeah. he's very efficient with how he fights, with how he wrestles. Uh, and he's got a very, very, uh, very, very high level, uh, wrestling and clinch, uh, clinch organization of, of techniques. And he's nasty with it, man. And, and I'll be honest, he's, uh, he's one of the, maybe possibly the most underrated grappler that I've ever, I've ever personally trained with. And he has some of the best ground and pound, probably the best ground and pound that I've ever trained with, man. Like, the dude is very – he's extremely underrated. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see what he does in 2020, especially going, when, going up to a new class. When is he uh, – 2021. When is he going to become sorry, world champion? It's okay. When is he going to become world champion? Because it's just a matter of when. Yeah. In my so opinion. I, I see uh, – I see it. He, he's still he's still young in the game, but I could see us breaking into the top 15 this year. I mean, I, I would I would I agree. say that that's going to happen. I agree. Um and you know, some people the genetics play a big role um, when in this game. I think, in my opinion, uh, I think that uh, a guy gets a certain mental strength when he hits thirty. That um, I mean, not to say that the Grant isn't got mental strength, but like if he's as mentally as strong as he is right now, in my humble opinion, when he gets to be 30, 31, and that's his prime, man, that dude's gonna be a machine yeah. it's it's going to be impressive i i cannot wait to see what happens with that kid too to be honest yeah he's got a bright future there's no doubt about that no doubt yep for sure um man we're gonna cut it off man um james dude hey thanks for joining the show uh this is our first show uh for mma futures awesome. um yep so uh yeah so nathan and i got together and uh we put our heads together and we're gonna try to better this and, and up the production i hope you come on again yeah, uh, let me know. Um, normally, I'm going to have a co-host in here, so Chris Gregory is going to be in here, so uh, it, there'll be some comic relief in there somewhere. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah, and uh, we're going to get Wooster on here eventually, um, and and we're going to see how that goes. And uh, <laughs> uh, good good luck getting to talk for thirty. Oh, minutes. I already know. Yeah, he's just going to sit here and go. That's going to be Wooster right yeah. there, man. <laughs> I can get, I can, I can just get him fired up, man. When we're, we play, uh, we play Warzone together, man, and he gets so pissed at me. Like, <laughs> it's funny. I can like just see his head boiling, getting red. And it's funny. Um, anyway, man, it's good talking to you, man. Um, hey, good luck with twenty twenty one, man. We're uh, happy to have you on here. You got shout outs. Nah, man, just appreciate you guys for having me on. All right, brother. Well, thanks, man. We're gonna cut you off now. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yep. See you, brother. Thank you.